Hey guys, so today I have a back to school advice video for you. And when I say school, I mean all kinds of school. So college, university, high school. I asked you guys on Instagram for topics and the most highly requested were organization, study tips, time management. I feel like they all kind of fall under the same umbrella. So I'm going to be talking about those today. And otherwise, let's just jump straight into the advice. So we are going to start with organizing a clean and tidy space for getting your work done. The space will vary depending on what you are studying and what you are working on, but we're gonna go with a traditional desk setup. I feel that almost no matter what you are studying, you will need to write essays at some point or use a computer and do some writing. So here are my essentials for a nice studying space. I recommend having an in tray and file holders for all your printed material and notebooks. Then of course, your writing tools, space for your computer or laptop, and then a space next to it for writing. You just want everything to have its own container because not only does this keep everything looking really nice and you can find it easily, it makes it so much easier for cleaning because you can lift up the containers and then you can wipe down the space and then just put the containers back. It is so much easier and will save you so much time than if you have all these little loose bits everywhere. Definitely print a calendar of the terms or the semester or however you break up the school year or draw it onto a whiteboard and have this over or near your desk space. I designed a printable A4 school calendar that is free to download and have included versions that vary in length from 10 to 16 weeks. Download links to all different versions will be in the description box below. If you still much prefer to do everything digitally or due to like limited space or resources, like maybe you can't print a calendar, that's totally fine. Just make sure you consistently use it and make sure you have it on your phone as well, like maybe Google calendars or something like that. And every time you get new homework, an assignment or an exam date, you can write that into your calendar. So that way, every time you come back from class, you have an instant visual reminder of when things are due and how much time you have to complete all your tasks. I think one of the biggest lies we tell ourselves is, oh, I don't need to write that down. I'll just remember. Don't do that. <laughs> write it down. That links in with my next tip, which is kind of a no brainer, but also sometimes kind of not, which is know when things are due. I think it's really easy to get overwhelmed when you aren't aware of time passing. I recommend writing in a due date as soon as you get it and then write in reminders every week leading up to that due date and then a reminder one day before. And I would do those more kind of short distance reminders on the reminders app on your phone, especially because that could be maybe at a really busy time when a lot of stuff's due. So it's good to have those like instant reminders on your phone. Also make sure you know what is due and you have a clear idea of the project outline. You wouldn't want to get back from class and realize that you don't fully understand the project. And then you have to either wait to see your teacher or your professor in your next class or like in a few days. I recommend recording your teacher or professor or whoever it is on the day that they give the assignment because you can hear all those little details, especially if you are prone to forgetting or forgetting to write things down. If you have that recording on your phone, you can just reference that. And also be sure to think if you have any questions and ask them immediately, because that means you can successfully complete what I talk about in the next tip, which is making a small start on a big project as soon as you get it. For example, this might be writing the introduction of your essay, sketching out an initial plan for an artwork, reading the first chapter of a book or a big chunk of reading you have to do, or even just the foreword. This does take some self-discipline, especially if you're thinking, oh, that essay isn't due for six weeks. I don't need to start on it now. But seriously, just having a little bit of it done makes it so much easier to come back to and continue working on it. Because when you haven't started a task, it feels way more overwhelming. But if you're like, oh yeah, I already wrote the introduction to that. That got the ball rolling. Plus, once you have finished watching the rest of this video and heard the rest of the tips I have to say, you will also find it much easier to cross that initial hurdle. Mini deadlines are a great way to get work done that tie in perfectly with the points that I've discussed so far. This is very similar, if not kind of the same thing as chunking, which was a term my teachers used a lot, where you break up a large task into lots of smaller tasks and then it just feels less overwhelming. What I'm talking about is a little bit more detailed and I think a little more effective. You wanna write a comprehensive list of every single little task you need to do for that job. So I'm gonna use an essay, for example, here. So that could include even things like 
proofreading, formatting the file, printing the file. So write down all the little tasks and then set specific due dates for them. For example, I will have 800 words completed by the 4th of November. I will have finished painting the three little birds on my oil painting by the 18th of September. I will have read up to chapter five by the 10th of December. You'll actually find writing this list to feel maybe quite soothing or therapeutic or even just productive because like I was talking about earlier, making a small start on a big project, this could be that first step, just writing out all the tasks. It really helps if you are a procrastinator, it'll make you feel kind of accomplished, like I did something. <laughs> and little side note, if you don't like the idea of tons of mini due dates for a big task, you can customize this by scratching the due dates and simply sticking to the chunking method, which is just breaking down the tasks and completing them every time you have time to do so. The due dates just keep you on track. If you tend to get really overwhelmed and very disorganized, I think the due dates give you a bit more structure but if you kind of have things under control then you can just stick with the chunking method which is basically everything except for the due dates. So you've organized your workspace, you've set all your deadlines, you're on top of all that stuff, now it's time to sit down and begin the actual work and my first tip for that is very simple removing distractions. This is so relevant today with the temptations to procrastinate on social media so my advice is simple and that is to just delete the apps off your phone then you can reinstall the apps when you have completed the big task if you don't need the internet for what you are working on definitely turn off wi-fi as well i found this helped me a lot for essay writing alternatively to deleting of course you can use the screen time settings on iphone and there might be something similar for android or other types of phones i'm not sure this allows you to set time limits for certain apps on your your phone or even lock them completely. Just make sure you set this up with a friend or family member so that way they can set it to a password that you don't know and then the only way you can get the password from them is if you show them proof of the work that you have completed. Now moving on to what I think is the most effective productivity tool, at least it is for me personally, and that is temptation bundling. This is something I've always done but I didn't realize it had an actual term until recently. It's when you take something that you don't really want to do but you know you have to do, it's maybe a bit of a chore, and you combine it with something that you want to do and that you enjoy. This also ties into the concept of rewarding yourself, but it's different in the way that you are simultaneously getting a reward at the same time as getting the work done. It's all about using an instantly gratifying task that you love to do to encourage you to do something less gratifying. For example, this might be doing some cardio at the gym, you know, maybe you find it a little bit boring or you know, you know it's good for you, but you just like can't be bothered to do it. And then you combine this with watching your new YouTube subscriptions. So now only when you go and get your cardio done, you can enjoy watching your favorite YouTubers. I know you guys do this with my videos because I see it in the comments. I've had you say that you are saving my video to watch when you are like at the gym or cleaning. So how can you apply this to schoolwork you need to get done? For example, if you have an essay to write, you could combine this with drinking your favorite beverage like coffee or kombucha. So now only on days that you are writing your essay or that you maybe complete a certain word count, you are allowed to have your delicious kombucha lemonade or your iced cinnamon dolce latte or your plain black coffee or your hot chocolate whatever floats your boat if you need a little more motivation to stick to these temptation bundling rules that you've set for yourself definitely tell your friends family or roommates about it so they can help keep you on track especially if they see you cheating on one of the rules. But seriously, temptation bundling works so well. If you guys have temptation bundles that you've come up with yourself for your schoolwork, or if you have recommendations for others, please leave them in the comments below because I think everyone else would find them really useful and I would love to hear them as well. My next tip is find out what kind of learner you are. So the three types are visual, auditory and kinesthetic or you could even be a combination of these three types. Now, if you're feeling a little bit skeptical, trust me, I was too, but once you do a quiz or read the descriptions of the types of learners, you will be like, wow, that is actually me. And it's so helpful to know. So I'm a visual learner. I learn things from pictures, graphs, photographs, drawing things, 
writing out my essay loads and loads of times again to memorize it, which I will talk about again shortly. So yeah, pretty simple. Auditory is learning through sound. So you might learn through music, through rhyme, listening to your study notes to memorize them. And the third type is a kinesthetic learner. So you learn through physical movement, through touching things, maybe taking them apart, putting them back together, building things and also through maybe flashcards and stuff like that. I will link a quiz below so you can find out what kind of learner you are. Ever since I learned this, I was able to adjust my studying methods based on my visual learning tendencies and I realized that I could learn things and remember things so much better when I knew how to study for them properly. So this tip definitely helps massively with memorization, which is a big chunk of how to do well in exams, really. It's kind of just testing your memory. So here's some examples for what I do as a visual learner. I would write out my essays in full, word for word, to memorize them because seeing the words written out and also kind of the motion of writing them, which maybe is a bit kinesthetic, that helped me as well. But then I would draw little pictures pictures in the margins that reminded me of key quotes or points I made in that essay. You could also do this for note taking in class or if you prefer to memorize from notes, draw little pictures next to each note. I remember this one time before an exam, me and my friends found a whiteboard in one of the drama classrooms that wasn't being used and we used it to draw up all our notes and I drew little pictures that were associated with all the little key points that we needed to remember for the exam and this worked so well. It was a visual arts exam and I remembered so much for it and ever since then I kept doing it. It seriously worked a treat. If you're an auditory, 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 auditory? auditory. If you're an auditory learner, try recording yourself saying your essay or your study notes and then listening to it on the way to and from school and that will help you memorize it and you can also try making up little songs or rhymes like I mentioned earlier which I've done myself before and that works super well. And if you're a kinesthetic learner, so if you learn from movement, you might want to try something with colorful post-it notes that you can pick up and move around or maybe flashcards. I've heard that that really works. It does have some similarities to visual learning. In fact, I think all of us kind of have a combination of the learning types, but just one of them is more dominant. Like for me, it's visual. But wait, when filming this video, I forgot to include what might be the most important tip of all, and that is back up your hard drive. You don't wanna be one of those people that only starts backing up your computer after a horrific experience of losing all your work. Prevention is key. You can't just not back up your computer and think that everything is gonna be okay. So please back up your hard drive, if not for yourself, do it for me. Which of these study tips did you find the most helpful? Please leave it in a comment below. I'm really curious to know and also tell me which of these you maybe already use and if you have study tips of your own that I didn't talk about that you have to share. I would love to hear them and I'm sure everyone else would as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.